Hello everyone. In today's tutorial, we will be covering a technique to knock out uh, background information from a layer by using color differences between the layer and a copy of itself. For this, we use uh, a technique called time difference. And what this does, is it takes information from uh, a layer, compares it to the layer above it or in front of it, and then knocks out those pieces of information that are the same. Anything that changes will be retained, therefore creating an alpha channel that we can use to uh, mask out different subjects or characters out of that actual film. So let's get started. For that, what the goal today is to create something that looks like this. So basically we have a skater that is jumping in front of a title and then some graphics that appear behind him. So let's go ahead and create a composition using the original footage. And you will notice that basically this is the footage of the skater going through and through. The skater is not stopping, it's just a follow through shot. So what we want to do is we want to do two things. Let's start by making a copy of this layer and turning off the visibility of that layer. Now let's go back and select the previous layer and what I want to do is I want to freeze that information on the first frame. What, what that means for me is I need to have a way of controlling the timeline, the way the time actually works on my layer. And to do that, I need to enable something called time remapping. So let's go with the layer selected. I'm going to go to the layer drop down, and then I'm going to go into time, enable time remapping. Notice the shortcut, control alt -T. So. Uh, once I apply that, you'll notice that I have a new um, transformation avail available to me under that layer, and it's called Time Remap, and it contains two keyframes, one at the very beginning and one at the end of the layer. What that indicates to me is that this layer's time is indicated by those two keyframes, this keyframe being the 0, 0, 0 point, and that keyframe being the end value of the time, which happens to be around 7.08. Now, if I move this keyframe downstream on the timeline, that means that this layer will not start playing back and you'll notice that there's no playback on time all the way until I reach that keyframe. Once I reach that keyframe, my time starts playing forward. And that means that I have basically accelerated the speed because I have the same amount of information to play on less amount of time. Basically, I have a way of controlling the time. I can accelerate even reverse. So if I get this last keyframe and put it over here, if I slide it to the beginning, my layer will be playing backwards. As you can see, when I scrub, I see that skater moving backwards. That is not the goal for what we're trying to do right now. The goal is to freeze that layer. And so, um, but keep in mind that time remapping allows you to control the way your footage plays back and forward or through time accelerating or decelerating. And just like any other keyframes, this, these two can be selected and graphed out by using the actual uh, graphing editor to be able to control the acceleration or deceleration of time. Now, what I want to do is I want to stop this frame from moving forward. And to do so, I will go ahead and freeze it. And that means in, times of, in terms of keyframes, it means hold that value. So I'll right click that first keyframe and under the flyout menu, I'll select toggle hold keyframe you'll notice that this uh, the keyframe shape changed to a box, and that means that my frame will not change for the length of my composition, unless I create another keyframe here, which I don't, I'm not gonna do. I will never reach this keyframe on regular playback, so I really don't need it. I can delete it if I want to. I will leave it just on for now, but if I delete it, you'll notice that nothing basically happens. Basically, my keyframe is this keyframe value is being held for the length of the composition because I don't have any other keyframes. So the information is not changing. Basically, I'm stuck on the first key on the first frame. And that's what I want. That is my plate. That is the information that I want to use to knock out the information on the second video, which is the one that we copied. Let me turn on that visibility for that. And you'll notice that the background is pretty much the same. Nothing changes except for the skateboarder and a couple of other people back here. So if I scrub the video, you'll notice that those are the only things that change. That tells me that the information I want to retain are the skateboarder and probably these guys, but we'll figure out what to do with them later. So for now, let's go ahead and apply the difference 
between those two, make use of the difference between those two layers, the one that has the subject moving and the one that doesn't have anything moving in the background to knock out that background. To do so, I'll apply a filter to the top layer called time difference. So I'm going to go into my layers, into my effects um, window. I'm going to filter out for time difference and there it is. I'll apply it and you'll notice that your layer goes gray. What that means is basically it's looking at itself right now. It's saying, what is the target? Meaning, where do I get my mat from? That's what the layer is telling me. Where's my mat in order to be able to knock out whatever you want me to knock out? And if it's looking at itself, basically everything gets knocked out. What I want is to use the mat that's below it, this one, which is this layer right here. So if I select that, you'll notice that I now have my skater back and the elements below down at the bottom that are moving. And if I scrub, I'll notice that those are the only things that are available to me. You also notice that the footage is a little hazy. And that means that I still need to do a bit of fine tuning in order to be able to get what I want out of this. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and turn on absolute difference to take a look to see what this is looking like. And this is basically an x-ray version of what we, it's basically knocking out, it's looking at the colors and starting to figure out what the differences are between the different elements between the background and the foreground. Now what I want, I don't want the original alpha channel. That's not what I want to see. I want to see the max result. And max result basically cleans up everything else. But as you can see, I get, I get some semi-transparent elements in my subject. And that's not what I want. What that is telling me is that I need more contrast between my foreground and my background. And so I will incre I'll start increasing my contrast until I get to a happy place. I'm going to go all the way to about 260. Now let's go ahead and play this back and forward. And I can see that this is fairly clean in order to see the end results of what I'm doing. Let me turn off the visibility of my background layer. And you'll notice that basically I, even though it looked clean to me, I still have a lot of noise and that noise will be visible if I place something in between my background layer and my foreground layer, which is what my intent is. So let me place this here and type the text. Let me turn that layer back on and I'm going to type the text big air right in the middle of the screen. Big air. Now, let me actually align this to the center of the composition. And I am going to place that text behind my other layer. If you'll notice, there is some noise happening in the letters. I see some bluish hues on it. And the reason for that is because, like I said before, there is a lot of noise still on that top layer. So what I want to do is I want to create more of a clean mat in this layer where the skater is uh, in order to be able to knock that out. Remember, anything that is going towards black will become transparent anything that goes towards the white will become opaque. So I, in terms of an alpha channel, this area here where the skater is, is completely white. The background area is supposed to be black, but now it's kind of a noisy gray. I can keep on increasing my contrast, but as you'll notice, it'll keep on making this sharper. So now I am at 360 and, uh, and I still, and this is actually bringing more noise back to the foreground, which we don't want but it's actually giving me a sharp uh, cutout of my subject, which is what I want. So I just need to figure out a way of knocking that grayish noise out. And in order to do that, we will use another filter called Matte Choker. Now what Matte Choker does is it will uh, turn anything that is gray into black. So it creates basically a very sharp contrast between whatever is well highlighted by my contrast on the under time difference and anything that I want knocked out. And in this case, it actually did exactly what I needed it to do. I still see some halos around my subject, but because the backgrounds match, when I turn it on, I basically, they disappear. I don't see anything else. And my knockout looks pretty good. It actually, I see a pretty clean um, mat between the two layers. So let me go ahead and place this around here around 321 and I want to freeze the action on that layer. So to freeze that action, I am going to select that object, that layer, and I am going to activate time remapping for it. And at this time, what I want to do is I want to make a keyframe with the value of that particular layer in time right here. So I'll go to the diamond 
create a keyframe with that value at 321. Then if I want to retain this for about two seconds, let me go to about 521. And I want to make a copy of this keyframe, this one here, control C, and then paste it, control V. And you'll notice that my key, my, my footage is not rolling during that time. Then it speeds up towards the end to finish the actual footage. So with that done, I can now go ahead and slide these two, let's say to about three seconds. So I'm going to select the two time map, time remapping keyframes and snap them to the three second mark. And so my skater is going to come into scene and it's going to freeze for about two seconds and then it's going to fly off the screen. So that takes care of the actual matting. Now, to create the little halos around the subject when the subject appears on screen, I am going to make two copies of this footage. So command, control D, control D. I am going to maintain the one here. Actually, I'm going to make three copies. I'm going to maintain the one on top as the one that I'm going to be using to see the character. So I, I can turn the visibility of it off if I want to, or just make sure that I don't change it. The ones that I want to change are these three, and they, they, they will become available only after that three second mark. So let me trim them to that point, and also at the end, I'm gonna trim them as well. And I'm gonna apply layer styles to each one of these. Now, layer styles in After Effects work the exact same way as they do in Photoshop. The only difference is how to activate them. So to activate layer styles for these layers, what I will do is I'll go ahead and go select the layers, go to layer, layer styles, and then what I want to do is create a stroke. Now this stroke is gonna be around, uh, I'm gonna start with a stroke value of about 15 for the first one, 30 for the second one, and 45 for the third one. So the first one here will have a stroke value of about 15, and that's the thickness of the line. The second one here will have a stroke value of about 30. And that is going to have, let me start changing color. So instead of red on the first one, I'm going to use kind of an orange, yellow. Let's start with yellow. Then the second one will probably be an orange. And the third one will be a stroke value of 45 and I'll maintain that one as red. So basically I'm creating these little halos around the character. At the same time, I want to stagger them through time slightly so that they appear one after the next. So what that does, what I do in order to do that, let me actually just close all these so that I don't have so much real estate occupied. Let me go ahead and stagger the endpoints for them. So I'll go one, two, three frames for the second one, snap, and then page down, page down, page down in order to move my playback at one frame at a time. And so basically what this is gonna look like is gonna be like that. So when I play that back, that's the effect. I will do the same thing at the end. So on the tail end, I'm gonna be bringing them in a couple of frames only this time and Let's go ahead and play that back and see what that looks like. Okay, and then at the end, this is gonna disappear staggered again, and then the animation continues. Now, in the original video that we saw, I had this uh, lines coming from behind the character, and that is a graphic that I brought in from Illustrator, the sun rays. So I'm simply gonna place that behind the uh, the 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 object behind the title, sorry. So before I do that though, I just noticed that I have some uh, strokes down here because there were some items that were still moving down there as you can see. So the mat that I created actually retained that within the alpha channel. I wanna knock those out. I just simply want the character jumping in the front. So to knock those out, what I want to do is I wanna pre-compose these three copies, the ones that have the, the strokes, the layer styles, and I wanna Go ahead, like I said, pre-compose them, and I'm gonna call this one strokes, so that I know what they are, not storks, strokes. <laughs> and I'll go ahead and click okay. And then I can make use of, an of a mask 
to knock that out. So let me go ahead and choose a mask over here and select only that area where they are, where those halos are. Now, you'll notice that this turn off the visibility of the halos here, and that's because my mask is only showing me what I selected. You will notice that under that new layer with the pre-composition, I have the option to reverse my mask. So if I do that, it knocks out the visibility of the halos on the background and only retains it on the area here. Basically, I just reverse my mask. And when I play this back, I get the halos only on the skater. So with that done, let's go ahead and bring in the sun rays. I'll place the sun rays between the title and the background. And what I want to do at this point is I want to create a mask that covers that entire graphic in a circular manner. It's going to be a circular mask. So I'll go ahead and change my mask tool to the ellipse tool. I'll make sure that I have the layer selected and then I'll double click that ellipse tool. Notice that double clicking created a mask for me on that layer. And that mask is now what controls the visibility on that particular layer right now. So if I double click on one of the anchor points, one of the handles, sorry, in, the, in that mask, I get the box that gives me the handles to be able to resize. So I'm going to go ahead and this is the final size of the mask. So I want that mask to be at that size at around three seconds and 10 frames. Let's say, let's say 315. So at 315, I'm going to keep the shape of that mask. And in order to keyframe the shape of the mask, as we saw in class, I need to uncollapse the mask and click under mask path. Now that maintains that shape of the mask at that point. Then I'm going to go back to about three when the last one of those halos appears, which is around here, 306. And I am going to double click on one of the handles and I'm going to start resizing. Now you'll notice that I'm resizing, I'm deforming unevenly. And that's not what I want. As I am resizing, I am going to press the shift key to maintain the uh, the, appropriate, uh, the appropriate sizing for it so that it's, it remains circular, so that it maintains, the it constrains the proportions. And then I'm going to press after pressing shift and keeping shift pressed, I'm also going to press control and that, that will resize towards the center of my mask. So if I let go of let go of my mouse, let go of control, let go of shift and zoom into this composition, I can see that I basically have my mask all the way down here. Now that's the point where it appears. So up to that point, I shouldn't be seeing any mask, any, any graphic. So I will be trimming that graphic right there up to that point and now you'll notice that the mask basically grows out of the center. You will also notice that I have feathering options under the mask so I can always feather that a bit let's say 20 pixels or even more let's say 60 pixels in order to create kind of more a, a smoother outline to it as it grows. Now I can also ease into this keyframe right click and go keyframe assistant easy ease in or shift F9 and that will speed up and slow down as it goes towards the next keyframe speed up from the first keyframe and slow down as it gets to the second keyframe so that so far looks pretty good I also want to add a bit of rotation so I want this rotating now I said this was going to be on screen for about two seconds so if I went from three to five I want the mask to return back again to disappear at around this point. At that point, the mask should be gone. So I can go ahead and copy these two keyframes and then paste them here. Right click the copied keyframes and time reverse them and move them back so that my mask closes at that point. So basically I made a copy of these keyframes, pasted them on this end and reversed their playback so that they close in. And so that closes my visibility for the mask. Now with that, with that done, I'm going to put a rotation keyframe here for this layer. And I'm going to go to the second set of keyframes over here and I'm going to make it rotate about 60 degrees. So the end result is the mask rotating in the background and skateboarder stops. So let's do a quick render of this to see what it looks like.
So now that this is done rendering, let me go ahead and trim that uh, layer, the sun rays layer to the end point of this so that it disappears. Let me do a quick render and this is what it looks like. So it makes for a nice bumper for a show or for a commercial. Now let's go ahead and apply uh, some sound to this so that it doesn't look as dry. <clears throat> and for that, I brought in a uh, just a soundtrack and I'm simply going to drop it in here. Now this soundtrack has, uh, let's see, does it have any, let's see what it sounds like with it. All right, so with that done, basically, you can actually make use of the beats in the soundtrack to time out time things happening on the scene. Highs like this one right here, that's probably a, a high note within the sound. Let's see. It's like a hit or it's actually a bass hit. So let's see. That, and that supports visually what you're seeing on the screen. So if you look at it when you hear when you have the double bass beat boom boom on the bass drum, that support that looks almost like the whole thing was time to um, for the thing to come out as you can see for the actual sun rays to come out. So, this achieves the exact same uh, result as what we were doing with the um, where we were trying to knock out the background from the uh, by using um, the the previous uh, uh, filter, the previous uh, exercise that we were working on in class where we were doing the rotoscoping. Sorry, I'm I, I'm missing my words, losing my words right now. So uh, it's basically the same effect in order to be able to, to knock out a background and retain the information that we want to retain from that background on scene and then replace background with whatever we need. Um, I hope this helps.